It would definitely be a lie if I told you that I liked Arctic Freezer 50. In the end, the amount of plastic and the therefore unpleasant feeling of quality did leave kind of a bad taste in my mouth. But there ain't nothing that couldn't be bleached away. Meet what happens if you stop using any plastic and replace that with an unhealthy amount of bleach. The Frieza 34 Esports Duo in white. And because I completed my How to Become a Magician WikiHow course, the Frieza 34 Esports. Now, before anybody thinks that Arctic decided to stop using any pigments in their products, their Freezer 34 Esports and Esports Duo are not solely available in white with white and white. Just like the Bionics P120 fans used on here, the whole cooler can be purchased in the same variety of colors, including things like the standard black and colorful reds and greens. Though the color picker does not always make a lot of sense. It's... So yes, depending on the color you've chosen, you will get different looking fans and even heat sinks. Then there is the eSports nothing and eSports duo version. As expected, the only difference is that one is a dual fan push-pull config and the other one is just a single Bionics P120 fan. That being said, except for that one extra fan, absolutely everything else will be exactly the same. Therefore you can take this as a review of both. And I can now even use my magic WikiHow trained powers to do the benchmark for both versions. So we will have all of the results later on in the benchmark section. Anyway, now let's finally get to the cooler. The Freezer 34 Esports and Esports Duo are single tower coolers measuring 157mm in height. Due to the really thin radiator, every fan configuration will not be interfering with your RAM, making this a 100% RAM compatible cooler. The fan or fans used on here are Bionics P120s. These little monsters are spinning at up to 2100 RPM while pushing 67 CFM at 2.75mm of H2O. Underneath the cooler we will find Arctic's usual approach using 4 direct touch copper heat pipes which will not be able to cover the complete IHS of most ships out there right now. On the compatibility front we will have the mandatory AM4 for AMD as well as all of the LGA 1150s, 1200, 2011-3, 2066 for Team Intel. Moving forward Arctic will also make sure to include the mounting bracket for the newest LG8700 socket, which is a great move. Inside the box you will find the usual mounting gear for every platform, as well as some thermal paint. On the installation front, the easiest word to describe it all is easy. No matter your platform, we will first need to remove the fan or fans from the cooler by unclipping them from the heatsink. And yes, the clips will stay in place. Awesome. Then we will need to install the mounting clips onto the heatsink in an inwards pointing position. For Team AMD we can proceed by removing the black retention brackets and screwing the standoffs with a single line into the now outsticking leftover threads. Just make sure that the one line will be in the bottom. Over on Team Intel we can take the provided backplate and put the backplate nuts into the appropriate holes and fixate them with the rubber pieces on the other side. For the exact position the inner holes are meant for LGA1200 and every 1150 while the outer ones are for LGA1700. From here position the backplate behind the motherboard and screw it down using the standoffs without any lines. Now on both platforms position the cooler on top, don't forget the thermal paste, and screw it down using the nuts and put the fans back in place. Now before we proceed, already a couple of words about the whole installation process. Compared to Arctic's own Freezer 50, this was beautiful, it was easy, nothing was fiddly. Sure, the individual steps are pretty similar to the Freezer 50, but the lack of plastic which is blocking just stuff and the fact that it's a single tower cooler made it way easier to reach everything. So installation was enjoyable unlike this torture. With that out of the way, let's get over to the benchmarks. First off, let's start with the single fan Freezer 34 eSports. Using our usual benchmarks, the mini anti-plastic machine was able to keep the 3900X at 53 degrees C above ambient, which is on par with something like a Be Quiet Dark Rogue Pro 4, a very, very good result. On the noise to performance side, it does not look bad either. Sure, it's not nearly as efficient as something like a Dark Rock 4 or Noctua NHU-12A, but compared to other single tower coolers like the Montec Air 210, which is far more appropriate to compare it to, based on the size, it beats the absolute crap out of it. But the fun part begins when we put the second fan back on. The Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo managed to keep the CPU at 51 degrees C, 2 degrees colder, 
than the single fan version and on the same level as a much, much bigger dual tower Freezer 50. But it's the noisy performance that left me quite shocked. As expected, the Freezer 34 Duo started off a tick louder than the single fan version but at a way lower temperature. But as soon as we reach the same temperature level, the dual fan version will always be quieter at the same temperature due to the fan being able to spin a significantly slower. And the most shocking part is how efficient this little thing can be compared to the Freezer 50. Not only did both coolers manage to keep the CPU at the exact same temperature level, but the Freezer 34 Duo managed to do it quieter and after a little hiccup, which the Freezer 50 had a small lead, the Freezer 34 Duo was the far better option for the majority of the time, making it, in my opinion, the overall better cooler. Now, there are a ton of different possibilities why and how a single tower cooler outperformed a so much bigger alternative. And my best guess is that the Bionics P120 fans on here are just superior to the P12 and P14s used on the Freezer 50, which I can kind of confirm based on my own reviews about each of those fans. And then there is also the fact that Whatever the plastic does to the P12 or P14, they ended up being louder than they should have been, giving the Freezer 34 kind of a noise to performance lead to begin with. But ignoring whatever happened here, in the end we found the Freezer 34 Duo to be the best overall cooler that Arctic off is offering right now, or air cooler. The best overall Arctic air cooler that they are offering right now. And I am especially talking about the Duo here. Sure, the Freezer 34 Normal wasn't bad either. But the huge noise to performance boost that a second fan adds makes it a far better option in my opinion. And things are getting a bit ridiculous here on the price side too. As of writing the script, I am able to get a Freezer 34 Duo for around 37 euros, while a Freezer 34 Normal would set me back about 27. And looking at our benchmark list, there are quite a few coolers underneath a Th Freezer 34 Duo that would set you back a bit more than those 37 euros, including Arctic's own Freezer 50. So what was good, what was bad? On the good part, we finally have an Arctic Freezer air cooler that isn't entirely made out of plastic, so quality-wise, very, very good. The installation method is perfectly fine, especially compared to this thing that I will just stop name-dropping from here on. The noise to performance is on the upper side of the spectrum, even managing to compete with things like the Dark Croc 4. And the max performance is surprisingly good considering that this is a relatively small single tower cooler. But the most impressive positive aspect is the price to performance ratio. Like right now, I do not have any cooler performing like this, which comes even close to 37 euros. It's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So overall, this thing left a very, very positive impression and on the could have been better side, the only thing I could really come up with is more of a question. I kinda can't shake off the feeling that Arctic did leave some performance on the table due to that ridiculously small base. The Freezer 50 had kind of the same base, but here it's, it really stood out to me that the Freezer 34 does not even nearly cover as much IHS as it theoretically could. And sure, the hotspots are covered and all, but what I would really like to see is like a bigger version of this. Maybe with two heat pipes more and a base that actually covers most of the CPU. All in all, I do believe that the Freezer 34 is in a dire need of a next iteration with a bit more of basically everything. Especially because these new Intel chips are quite a bit bigger than before. So to buy or not to buy? Yeah, absolutely, but the dual version. For that 10 bucks, you will get quite a lot more out of it and, and that's really, really worth it. But yeah, this should sum it up for the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports and 34 eSports Duo. At this point, a huge thank you to Arctic for providing us this amazing cooler. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the much bigger Freezer 50. And on a small side note, we now have a Discord server. I don't know what to do with it, but we have it now. So join and let's talk or whatever people do on Discord. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.